Good evening, friends. Tonight it is Wednesday, April 22nd. I hope this finds you well as we sink into a night of darkness and turning toward the end of the week. Today is the 50th anniversary of Earth Day. And I was missing being a part of church, uh, normal church activities this last, this week. As um, I had thought we might do some fun things while gathered in person to think about and to celebrate Earth Day. I don't know if you have personal experiences through the last 50 years of having Earth Day being impact on you personally or with your family or with your faith community. But it seems an interesting time to be pausing to think about the planet that we're on, a little blue dot in the sky that is rotating and providing us with life and sustenance. In this season of COVID-19, it has been uh, neat, uh, kind of cool to see photos being shared around the world of places that had been consumed by pollution and that in the course of these last couple of months, as so many nations have almost stopped or taken a great pause in the amount of driving and the amount of smoke and chemicals being produced into the air, that all of a sudden we are seeing places clearly that we have not been able to see for quite a while. I wonder how long it will take us to gunk up the skies yet again once people get going? Or will we? Will we stop and say, wait a minute, do we have to go back to that way? Do we have to go back to working in the same patterns that we did? Do we have to go back to producing things that make people sick, that make our waters sick, that make our air sick? Would there be other ways to creatively live and work and engage in commerce and engage in travel that could be life-giving not only to us but to the planet as well? And I say this confessionally because uh, although Doug and I love being in a building that has um, a big recycling bin right outside and we've been able here in Denver to collect and recycle many more things than we could in Montana, still there are many things that we fall short on. And so wherever you are, in your habits, in your livelihood, in your gatherings, may you look up, look out, look inward, and may we find a way to reclaim our connection even deeper with this beautiful uh, blue dot in the sky that we call home. So, Mother Earth, Father Sky, Planet Earth, we give you thanks for you have given us life. And may we seek life from one another this day. My name is Kama Hamilton Morton. I am the senior pastor of Grace United Methodist Church in South Denver. And you can find us uh, here on Facebook or on YouTube at uh, Denver Grace UMC. I would invite anyone who is curious, we're starting something new tomorrow. So if you catch this and are curious, we're going to do a little Bible study at noon on Thursdays where we kind of, I, I was calling it, what is the Bible and why should I care? and kind of looking at the concept of, uh, not, of what the Bible is. We, we have different stories if 
maybe you don't even have a Bible, uh, or know what it is, or don't know why, what the big deal is that people make about it. Um, so I, if anybody's curious or interested, uh, look for the event on Facebook, um, Denver Grace UMC, or here on my page. And I need a message from you um, to send a Zoom invitation to. I'm hoping it'll be a safe place for us to explore. The, some of us have received very specific messages about the Bible, perhaps younger in our lives or even through adulthood, and uh, may not be in the same place that we were when we were younger, when, things, when those things were uh, being mandated to us. So I invite you to, to join us if you wish. So Thursdays at noon, you can find the um, Thursday Zoom study group on the Facebook page and let me know and I'll send you a Zoom invite. So thinking about Earth Day and our connection to each other and the Earth and, and just how we treat not only the planet but um, our respective sisters and brothers that walk the Earth with us, it's been interesting to hear headlines around our national uh, representatives saying things like, we need to shut down immigration. And there's been about three years of a really hard line on that. And recent, just in the last few days, even more, you know, nobody's coming in, nobody's coming in. And yet, for anybody, at the same time, conversations around our, um, the supply system of how we get the things we need in our lives. And one of the major things we need in our lives is food. And I'm not an expert at our food supply system by any means, but I do know that here in America, one of the reasons we are able to purchase food so inexpensively compared to other parts of the world is that there are people who come and um, pluck up or cut down or uh, harvest the food that we eat that uh, may or may not originate from this country. And they often do tasks that many of us would not do because they're such hard physical labor. So uh, I just wanna pause and, and give thanks to those, whether they be immigrants, migrants, um, people fleeing poverty, or um, any number of circumstances that can separate people from, from their countries to have them come to our land. A lot of harrowing stories to be shared. And we, every time we sit down at the table and we may pray, some people, you know, we pray over our meal and say, thank you God for this meal. Uh, there are a lot of people who are unnamed and many times harmed in the act of producing food for us to eat. So I just, uh, I'm pausing around that. And on that note, I wanted to share a verse, a couple of verses from uh, the book of Leviticus. <clears throat> now, for some people, you hear the word Leviticus and you think, "But I'm not going to read that." Levi <laughs> Leviticus is the third book in our Christian Hebrew Scriptures or Old Testament, and in the Jewish Torah. And so it's Genesis, and then Exodus, and then Leviticus. So Genesis is the the beautiful creation stories. Um, there's the flood, there's, and then there's the story of the call of Abram, of Abraham and Sarah, and then there's the soap opera chapters of, of their um, progeny, <laughs> and they're just wonderful stories that really are about us. And then Exodus is the time, uh, is the story of Moses and the tra travels of uh, the hardship and the liberation and the journey of the Israelites as they escape Egypt and the slavery they're in and make their way to a new land. Leviticus is a book, uh, most of its chapters consist of God speaking, uh, talking to Moses. And then God says, Moses, then you repeat what, I, what I'm telling you to the Israelite people. So Moses is having a one-on-one -on -one with God with the instructions to repeat what he's hearing to the Israelites. And Within the whole story, the narrative, Leviticus, uh, most of it, takes place 
within the story of the Israelites' exodus. So this is after they've escaped Egypt, and they've reached Mount Sinai, which is the mountain uh, where Moses climbs up and converses with God and receives the tablets of the Ten Commandments. The instructions, there's a lot, there's a lot of do this, do this, do this. There are instructions. So this, this is a part of the Israelite instruction manual. Um, the instructions of Leviticus emphasize ritual, legal, and moral practices rather than just belief. So when I read that, I, I was struck by that because as I've talked about our, um, our Methodist tradition with, with John Wesley, part of what he's known for in the early Methodists have, and the, ever since the Methodists have been known for is not simply, we don't have a, a list of things you must believe in order to be a Methodist, <laughs> but we do focus a lot on practices. What are you doing in your life? Is there, wor there worship, prayer, study, getting in small groups with people that can, that can nudge you and stretch you in your life? Um, do you ha take the sacraments? Do you, do you read? Do you ponder? I mean, there are any number of things that are lifted up as, as these red regular practices that we're invited to do. So these are ritual, legal, and moral practices that that this new, these tribes of Israelites are, are to do as they come together to be a new people. Uh, so these are, this is two verses from Leviticus 19, verses 9 and 10, and they say this. So think about this in light of Earth Day, and also in light of thinking about the, the folks who produce our food for us that I was just mentioning. God says, when you reap the harvest of your land, you shall not reap to the very edges of your field or gather the gleanings of your harvest. You shall not strip your vineyard bare or gather the fallen grapes of your vineyard. You shall leave them for the poor and the alien. I am the Lord your God. So there's this concept of harvest and, and agriculture, which is so much a part of what uh, the biblical practices were. But there, there was a, a spiritual practice of gleaning and of leaving for those who, had, who, who struggled for sustenance. And so as you harvested the wheat, as you harvested the orchard or the grapes, if there were... Um, if there were, was fruit that fell on the ground, you weren't just to run and pick it up, but to leave it for the poor and the alien, those strangers from another land, or those who were impoverished. Man, as I read that tonight, I thought, gosh, what am I doing to glean out of my life for others who might be struggling? Um, you know, we, we, in our generosity giving, and our tithing, and our missional giving, you know, we, we give financially to some things. But, wow, what would that look like to, to think about some of the practices we do to glean uh, for others? What would that, how would we do that if we're not out in the field? Um, sometimes... Uh, Way, way back, early in my life, I spent the summer when I was in college working for a bed and breakfast in Asbury Park, New Jersey. Long story, I'm not gonna go into it now. <laughs> my mom and I spent the summer there. And it was interesting, it was a uh, three-story but old Victorian bed and breakfast. I was running up and down stairs, making beds. And, and that is where I learned about gratitude giving for those who serve others. For those who are in the service industry, I learned the value of generous giving. Because when I cleaned a room, if there was a $5 bill or a couple times, you know, some, a 10 or 20, it was just like the greatest, I mean, it was like, wow. They acknowledge that I'm here and that I'm picking up and that I'm cleaning up after them and that I'm not making a lot of money um, doing it. And ever since then, I have taken tipping or, or generous giving to servers or um, staying in a hotel room 
to hospitality as a, as a serious mandate. And if uh, that's, so that's one little piece just from, from my life that, that I have taken on as a, as a practice of ritual giving. But think about that in your life. Are there ways that we could glean, that we could, that we give off of our abundance to others? And what might that look like in this season when we know that so many in the coming months and over the next year, year and a half, two years are going to be unemployed, underemployed, struggling to make ends meet? What, what would that look like? So that scripture from Leviticus um, nudged me this evening. And so may it nudge you as well. Leviticus 19 verses 9 through 10. And I would simply go forth this night with a chorus, with, a, with this chorus. So I invite us to breathe. <sighs> Change my heart, O oh God, make it ever true. Change my heart, O oh God, may I be like you. You are the potter, I am the clay. Mold me and make me, this is what I pray. my heart, O oh God, make it ever true. Change my heart, O oh God, may I be like you. You are the potter, I am the clay. I pray. Change my heart, O oh God. Make it ever true. Change my heart, O oh God. May I be Beloved brothers and sisters, may we go into this good night prepared to rest, to rest our bodies, our minds, our spirits. May we consider the invitation and the challenge of this Earth Day anniversary and of our relationship to the planet and to each other. May we consider the invitation and the challenge of Leviticus that reminds us that when we have excess that we may consider ways to let some things go, that they may bless others. So may we prayerfully go into this good night, connected to God, connected to our world, and to each other. God bless you and keep you. Good night.